Hello. Hi, well, thanks for saving the day and stepping in. So we are delighted to have you. Uh, Dr. Cho is uh, joining us from University of Michigan and he'll be telling us about integrating area selective ALD with electrohydrodynamic jet printing. So good luck and please stay with us till the end. Got it, okay. Thank you for the kind introduction. Yep, so today I'll be talking about integrating area selective ALD with e-jet printing to enable additive nano manufacturing. So there has been a lot of previous work to enable additive nano manufacturing to replace the resource intensive clean room photolithography. However, there exist certain trade-offs between throughput, quality, cost, and as you can see on this table from a review article, the only techniques that can achieve nano in, in the current state of art is dependent nanolithography, which is a SPM-based technique, and electrohydronic jet printing. And for this work, I want to emphasize the potential of electrohydrodynamic jet printing to be combined with a vapor phase technique known as ALD in order to build up one monolayer at a time. So E-Jet is uh, another, another hybrid version of, of uh, inkjet. So it uses electrohydrodynamic phenomenon to pull the ink out from the nozzle. And the advantage of this is that, as you can see on this table, compared to other SPM-based techniques, it has pretty good resolution. So as you can see, it can achieve up to 10 nanometer feature size while maintaining high speed. So you can see the STM or AFM manipulation technique has a speed of in the range of a few nanometers per second. However, if you zoom in the electrohydrodynamic jet printing, it can achieve up to 80 millimeter per second, which is pretty fast considering the resolution of the, of the technique. However, this E-Jet e is limited in the ink composition because oftentimes when we are trying to print something out of the nozzle, we are limited by the physical and chemical composition of the ink. And then, and then this is where ALD kicks in because uh, this is, uh, if you look at the, the SEM image on the right, you can see that's a uh, zinc oxide, 20, 50 nanometer zinc oxide coated on a butterfly wing. And you can see that it has coated really conformally throughout the complex features of the butterfly. And also we have published recently in advanced electronic, electronic materials, and we have achieved record high mobility using our ALD process to deposit zinc tin oxide using a plasma-based technique. So ALD is really good for the thickness control, uniformity, conformality, and also it can be deposited in a low, relatively low temperature compared to other deposition techniques. And this is where we can combine E-Jet and ALD. So there is this thing called area selective ALD, which is that we can pre-pattern the surface and define growth area versus non-growth area by taking advantage of the th thermodynamics. So when we pattern the surface with, with a surface functional group that is th thermodynamically unfavorable to undergo ligand exchange during the ALD process, what we can do is we can delay the nucleation and we can prevent the ALD from growing on the non-growth surface. So you can see on the plot on the, on the bottom that when we pattern the surface with the inhibitor, we can, we can delay the nucleation and we can achieve this selectivity window, which is a thickness in, or, in which the surface remains inert towards the growth. So if we go deeper into the chemistry, I'm not going to be that deep because I know that the audience is pretty broad. So what happens, so this is an example using diethyl zinc, which is a precursor for zinc oxide. And when we pattern the half surface with a methyl terminated surface groups, what happens is that when we purse DEZ in, DEZ only undergoes ligand exchange with the hydroxyl terminated surface, which is a pristine surface. And the other methyl terminated group remains inert. And then we can keep pursing the subsequent precursors, and then we can repeat this to achieve the thickness that we want while maintaining the half surface inert towards the growth of the zinc oxide. And these are the two processes that we propose to achieve with EJET combined with area selective ALD. One is additive printing, where we can print polyvinyl pyrolidin, which is an inhibitor for ALD to act to passivate the surface towards ALD growth. And another technique that we propose is subtractive printing, where we first we would pre-pattern the surface with a PMMA, polymethyl metacrylate, and we would use NMP ink, which is N-methyl which is a solvent for PBP, 